Hello everyone, I'm Katerina Suprun. It's December 12th and Militarni is reporting. The Ukrainian military is testing robotic platforms on the battlefield. There are a lot of them. They are different and used for different tasks, so we will find out why they are needed. The Ukrainian armor company has handed over an Ajima ground robotic platform to the Kraken Special Forces. The system was developed by Melanian, based in the United Arab Emirates. It is expected that the platform will be used for logistical support for the evacuation of the wounded, as well as for launching its own drones or fighting enemy drones, providing communications, etc. The platform can carry up to 622 kilograms of cargo on land and 330 kilograms on water. It can also tow cargo weighing up to 555 kilograms. The Ajima can also be equipped with combat modules. It can be controlled remotely. The developer claims that the platform can be programmed to perform autonomous tasks. Why this particular platform? Back in 2021, Ukrainian armor signed an agreement with the manufacturer to localize the production of these platforms in Ukraine. However, the war disrupted this plan. Now the units that will use this platform are actually testing its characteristics, and it will be finalized for use in real combat conditions. This is not the first or second such platform to be tested in the armed forces of Ukraine. There was also the Themis multipurpose robotic platform with the Estonian company Milrem Robotics. In early December, Ukroboronprom, the state Ukrainian defense industry joint stock company, signed an agreement with the manufacturer of these systems to jointly develop a new generation of robotic defense systems. It is known that the Ukrainian forces have 15 Themis platforms. They are used in infantry units, as well as in border guard and law enforcement units. It is known that the military uses these platforms to mine or demine territories, and also for reconnaissance and evacuation. Last year, the Poroshenko Foundation donated one of these robots to the hospitalers' unit. At that time, the unit's founder, Yana Zinkevich, stated that medics would assess its capability to evacuate people from impassable areas. As for the signed agreement, cooperation is to begin to identify the needs and options for using such systems in Ukraine. Ukrainian companies at the same time will integrate the experience gained into existing platforms. The localization of Milrem Robotics production in Ukraine is also being considered. The MIS is a multi-purpose platform that can both transport cargo and, for example, communication and surveillance systems. It can be equipped with demining and mine clearing equipment, as well as combat modules with anti-tank systems or small arms. This is another example of a system used by the armed forces. Ukraine is also developing similar platforms, for example, the Mule robot. You can learn more about it in our report about the participants of Brave One. The carrying capacity of this platform is 400 kilograms. It uses electric motors, and the battery lasts for about 60 kilometers. Its speed is 10 kilometers per hour, and this robot is Circo S1, also from Brave One program. It can carry 200 kilograms of cargo and tow another 150. It can be used by artillery units to transport shells. It can also be equipped with special accessories for mining. This is a system that allows it to drop anti-tank mines. In addition, systems are being developed that can turn Circo into a mini mine trawl. Read more about this robot in our report here. The military is already testing this robot, and developers are finalizing it. Such robots can also be used as kamikaze, like, for example, the Ratel. This robot has also been tested on the front line. It carries anti-tank mines or a combat module. This allows the robot to blow up enemy vehicles or, for example, a dugout. Ratel's top speed is 24 kilometers per hour. The range is 6 kilometers. It can operate for up to two hours without recharging. These are just some examples of systems being developed or used in Ukraine. In the summer 2023, the then Deputy Minister of Defense, Volodymyr Havrilov, outlined the priorities for the use of such platforms in the armed forces of Ukraine. The first one is logistics platforms that can deliver cargo, ammunition, provisions, and other necessary items to positions directly on the front line, where the movement of troops is dangerous. Such systems can also evacuate the wounded. The second priority is developing combat platforms that can carry combat modules with automated grenade launchers and machine guns or anti-tank weapons. This will help operators hit targets from a safe distance. The third one is stationary systems with machine guns for combat use or optical stations for reconnaissance and surveillance. 
The disadvantage of such systems is that they are tied to a specific location, but at the same time they can be useful for preparing sabotage or integrating into a defensive line. Developers on these platforms highlight their primary focus on addressing challenges related to the navigability of these systems and communication tools, particularly in the context of electronic warfare and terrain considerations. These technologies are being refined directly on the battlefield in Ukraine, while globally, similar technologies continue to evolve. For example, this September at the MSPO exhibition in the Polish city of Kielce, we saw a robotic platform by Ro Totem. These systems use hydrogen batteries. This system can be used simply to transport cargo as a part of a swarm of similar drones for reconnaissance or as a platform for launching drones or for evacuation. It looks super innovative, but it's unclear whether it would be useful in real combat conditions. In addition, the company representative noted that the South Korean army is also studying how such systems can be used. And this is just the beginning. We haven't even delved into the realm of demining robots. Subscribe to Militani, like our videos, and stay tuned for our upcoming content.